Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about a JRPG series that I believe is probably a highly underrated franchise that I'm sure you're missing out on called Trails. The series has numerous titles such as Trails in the Sky 1 through 3, Trails of Cold Steel 1 through 4, Trails of Azure, Trails of Zero, and so on and so forth. So I'll try to provide summaries of their plots and tips on where to start, as well as everything else you want to know. Trails takes place on a continent known as Zemuria which contains the Liberal Kingdom, the Erebonian Empire, the Republic of Calvert, and other key nations with their own history, politics, and lore. New players should ideally start the franchise with the Trails in the Sky trilogy, which follows the story of Estelle Bright and her brother Joshua Estray as they work to become Bracers in Liberal. For those wondering, Bracers are combat specialists and investigators who work to protect the citizens of their nation, and sometimes other nations, that are in dire need. As Estelle and Joshua work to rise through the ranks as Bracers, problems arise within Liberal, which could have consequences that may result in international conflicts, and it will be these events that unravel the greater plot behind the games. Next, players should ideally play Trails of Zero and Trails of Azure. The games take place in Crossbell State, which is sandwiched between the Erebonian Empire and Republic of Calvert, which share a highly tense relationship and the two games follow Lloyd Bannings, who works for Crossbell Police Department's Special Support Section. These games are not yet on Steam, and have not been released in the West for consoles, but English translated releases have been announced for Steam and consoles by 2022 and 2023. After you're done meeting the Crossbell team, you hop over to Trails of Cold Steel 1-4, through which will follow Reen Schwarzer and his classmates through their journey as students who get involved with numerous conflicts that would normally be better left off to the military. So that's 9 games for you. But the story continues with Trails of Creation, or Hajimari no Kiseki, and Trails of Black, or Kuro no Kiseki, which are the two recent titles Westerners are dying for. So yeah, there's a lot to unpackage there with geography and plots unfolding, but I will say that the really cool part about it is that all of the characters eventually come together. In that sense, it reminds me of Game of Thrones, which follows the story of multiple characters scattered throughout the continent of Westeros, who eventually come together for a common goal. Since we just finished talking about plot, we have to talk about the next story element you'll learn about in your first grade reading class. Characters. The game has a large cast of characters that include highly talented swordsmen, highly accomplished military men or women, witches, and even artificially created human beings. And while some characters may feel tropey at first, like the Sundere who hates your guts because of one misunderstanding, a fair deal of characters become much more complex and begin to feel more real as the plot progresses. Character development aside, however, the series is absolutely saturated with waifus and husbandos, to the point that you will even fall in love with some of the NPCs, whether it's for their looks or their own character development, as NPCs do have side stories that unfold in line with the main plot. For the record, make sure you're constantly talking to NPC characters, as it allows you to collect notes about them, and eventually earn a sweet trophy. And again, as far as waifus and husbandos go, you have your pick among many choices, whether it's lollies, mature women, or even just characters of various hair colors. And the Cold Steel games also have plenty of free or paid for DLC, so you can get the swimsuits or other costumes you desire. But if just looking at your waifus and husbandos isn't enough, then guess what? You can play the Trails of Cold Steel series and experience bonding events with your best girls or best boys, which could lead to a romantic ending. And while we're on the topic of characters, we have to talk about the sexiest part of the series, the villains. There are many groups of antagonists throughout the series, whether it's bandits, mercenaries, terrorists, or militaries of rival nations. But the most amazing group of villains would have to be a secret society that is a threat to all nations. I won't name the secret society here because I want you guys to learn all you need to know at your own pace while enjoying the series, but I will say these few things. The members of the secret society are extremely overpowered, they have highly advanced technology that leaves even the greatest minds found on the Zemurian continent in awe, and these villains actually win fights. Like, even if you're playing New Game Plus with maxed out characters, you will not be allowed to win battles for plot purposes which makes the villains stand out as an actual threat rather than a bunch of pushovers, and I absolutely love that about the Trails franchise. So now you have all your plot and character story elements, which means we can move on to gameplay. The Trails series focuses on turn-based combat, much like Final Fantasy, Persona, and Dragon Quest. 
and the many elements involved in the combat system need to be understood in order to proceed through the game with any real chance of success. I mean, I literally played the Dark Souls series with just Sword and Shield, like a complete musclehead, to survive thanks to a highly leveled stamina bar, but brute force ain't gonna work in Trails. Trails does have some of your basic JRPG elements like character leveling, swapping equipment for better stats, and using magic to target enemy weaknesses, which can honestly do a lot to turn the tide of battle. And if you guys want to go all out and completely demolish an enemy or group of enemies, then we have S-Crafts, which are essentially your ults. But there are also some elements that are pretty unique to the Trails series, such as Orbments. Orbments allow you to equip magic skills, or even buff some of your stats like strength or speed. This is a mechanic that first time players may quickly take for granted, but constantly equipping better quartz into your Orbments, and using Sephiroth to create new quartz can give you that edge that you're missing in battle. And later in Cold Steel 2, we get gameplay mechanics such as Overdrive, which allows your synced characters to take multiple turns in combat, and even perform all-out attacks, similar to those found in Persona. Cold Steel 3 then introduces Brave Orders, which grant benefits such as buffed attack or defense to add another strategy element to the game. So now you might be thinking, got it, great plot, beautiful characters, and complex but manageable gameplay. I know everything I need to know. But the perfection that is the Trail series doesn't stop there. The game has an excellent soundtrack with relaxing instrumentals for when you need those comfy vibes, or even epic boss and battle music that really fits those intense and highly engaging moments that unfold. Personally, I prefer battle music, so I'll say some of my favorite tracks include Atrocious Raid and Silver Will. And I think this is a key point to keep in mind, as I know soundtracks can often be a deciding factor in whether or not someone tries a new series. Hell! Instrumentals like Yellow Zone from Atelier Satori were the reason why I hopped into the Atelier franchise and discovered a great and charming gaming experience with the Arlen and Dusk series. The last thing I want to talk about is the cost for getting into the series. Trails in the Sky often goes on sale on Steam for $10, so that's an easy way to hop into the start of the franchise. I also managed to get physical copies of Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2 for $40 each, which is obviously pricier. But both were collector's editions that came with art cards, soundtracks, steel bookcases, and all the DLC included. Pricing aside, the next investment would be time. Trails of Cold Steel 1 and Trails in the Sky 1 lasted me about 50 hours each, not counting my multiple replays, and Trails in the Sky 2 and Cold Steel 4 lasted me around 90 hours each. So, you'll definitely get your bang for your buck. And now you know everything you need to know about the series. The story, lore, geography, characters, gameplay, soundtrack, and dating elements are all highly enjoyable. And perhaps most important is that the franchise is consistently releasing top quality games. While other franchises like Final Fantasy can sometimes release titles that are pretty hit or miss to some fans, including myself, Trails is always an exciting ride to be a part of, and leaves fans thirsting for the next entry to release as soon as possible. So. I hope you guys give the series a shot and enjoy it as much as I have. If you enjoyed the video and want to hear more about anime, games, or manga you might not know about, please like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Your support is always highly appreciated. And I hope you all tune in again next time. See ya.